This is for you. Yes, I know it's a hockey trophy. I'm Canadian, so of course I have a hockey trophy. But I want you to replace this hockey player with you as a project manager. And consider this a project manager trophy. Because after you watch this video and you follow these tips, you are going to be an amazing project manager and you are going to rock it. Hi. My name is Adriana Girdler, and I am president of Cornerstone Dynamics and a productivity expert. I'm also a PMP, a project management professional, and I've been doing this for over 20 years. I do some major projects, a lot on a global scale, some pretty cool shit. So in this video, I'm going to share with you some tips, things that you don't think about that really are going to distinguish you from being a good to a great project manager. Don't be a know-it-all. Project management is not a natural skill set. I don't know how many times I've come across project managers who are really not great project managers. Why? Because they think they know it all and they try to dictate. If you're new to project management, tell your team that you're new to project management. Take some courses so that you can understand the fundamentals of project management. That is really important. Even more so, get your PMP designation. Because once you have that, you can go through any industry, any department, and you really will have a job for life. It's a valuable, valuable position to be in. So that being said, your first tip to being a great project manager is don't be a know-it-all. Because I promise you, I learn something every day, and I've been doing this for 20 years. I know I don't look it. Is that stupid? <laughs> I'm good with being silly. Psychology 101. It is really important that you understand how teams work. Now, if back in school you do not take any psychology courses, I highly recommend you start reading some books on psychology because the key to great project management is not just about executing tasks, it's about motivating your team members. Think about it, these are people who have to execute tasks on the project behalf, you're managing the project, but they don't report to you. So sometimes there's a conflict of interest because they're like, well, I only listen to my, my manager, I'm not gonna listen to you as project manager. So you have to learn how to motivate people and understanding fundamentals of psychology and the way we think as human beings is critical, not only from a standpoint of motivation, but empowerment. If you want to be a great project manager, it's not just about the checklist. It's about having the team own it because I promise you, once they feel empowered, they will move mountains for you, things that you never thought were possible. And that is really cool, particularly on large scale complex projects. So. Look up Psychology 101, understand some motivation, read, 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 and understand how it's best to motivate your team members. Provide inspiration. So, this is not a scope statement, nor is it a vision statement. It is really kind of like an inspiration statement. We talked about Psychology 101 and the importance of how to motivate a team. Well, part of that is inspiration. Now, I want to share with you something really cool that I do with my projects. And I've actually used Emmett here quite a bit. Major global scale project. We came up with our theme that everything is awesome because let me tell you, when you're on big projects, everything is not awesome. <laughs> There's a lot of ups and downs. But when you have inspiration and you bring people together, you can use Emmett, our little guy here, bring him to meetings. We've had some fun things. We did videos and we had Emmett in the videos. But really, to this day, the project that I worked on that I introduced Emmett and this is, uh, everything is awesome as an inspiration statement, they still email me and they'll still use that tagline because they connected me as their project manager to this inspiration. It is a super easy, fun, cool way to bring some fun in your project and inspiration. So it doesn't have to be Emmett, it could be anybody you want um, and you can reuse and recycle as much as you want with it as well. It's fun, it's easy, but most important, it inspires your team. Don't be a drill sergeant. I know when you're project managing, particularly when things are stressful, you probably get into this routine of get it done, checklist, check, 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 check. Sometimes in that mode, we can become my way or the highway. That is not gonna work. If you wanna be a great project manager, you wanna really empower your team, then you need to be flexible. It is not a one-way street. It is a two-way street. So don't be a drill sergeant. Listen to what your team has to say. Now, that being said, you will have to have some sort of go, no-go things. Like there's some fundamental things that I don't negotiate on. I must have this in order 
for me as a project manager to manage the project. However, there's other things I'm very flexible on. So I always listen to the team. If I have to have a certain document that everyone has to use for updating, that's my rule, no ifs, ands, or buts. But how often we update it, I'm very flexible with and I listen to the team regarding it. So it is a two-way street. Don't be a drill sergeant because I promise you, you won't be successful for that long. People will not listen to you. And if you're going to be successful, you really need to have people be on board and inspired. Last but not least, I want you to wash, rinse, and repeat, aka communicate, communicate, communicate. So you cannot communicate too much on a project, and if you're going to be a great project manager, you really need to, I like to say over communicate. I have a golden rule, I never say things once. Why? Because I promise you there were some people who didn't hear me say the first, the, what I wanted to say or explain to them the first time I did it. And I'm sure you've come across that as well. So I always tell my team up front, particularly at the kickoff, I'm going to probably say the same thing 25 times. And it has nothing to do with whether or not I believe that you got it. It's because there's going to be one person who doesn't get it. So the whole key is to over communicate. Ensure everyone understands what they're responsible for. But not only just the communication within the team, it's communicating outside of the team to your stakeholders, to the sponsor, um, you know, to any external agency that's helping you with that information. Ideally, it's not just communication, it's a change management plan that you really need to start integrating. Now, I'm gonna have to do a video on that. I don't have one on that yet, but that's probably really fundamental for large scale projects. For smaller projects, you can probably just stick with communication as a whole, but for large scale projects, definitely go the other route. But that being said, wash, rinse, repeat. Communicate, communicate, communicate. Did I tell you how important it was to communicate? Let me know what you think. Write project management in the comments below. Please like my video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the button low, share it with your friends, family, colleagues. I really would appreciate it. On that note, I will see you at the next video. See you later, bye.